A wonderful good morning to all of you in the matchless name of our Savior Jesus Christ, who is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. You believe Jesus Christ is the same? Yeah, then better tell your neighbor once again that Jesus is the same. Amen. Jesus Christ is the same. He never changes. We all change. From time to time we change. Our faith goes down, sometimes goes up. We testify. Exactly after one week or even next day, you deny everything. You positively you speak, but after maybe some moment, you will just think, oh, you are totally down. Sometimes you think, there is God. You set tears when you are speaking about God. At certain times, you will just become so dry and you react to God. Then you become angry, nervous, disappointed, and you will just say, hey, God, why is it like this? And we come up with one answer for all this problem. Because we are human. That's what the answer is. But the answer is not at all correct. We are human. Jesus Christ came in the human flesh. He tasted, he withstood. He was tempted and he went through the trial. But then later, he proved himself that human flesh, with our human mind, our will, emotion, can take victory through the Spirit of God. That's why those who believe in Jesus Christ, in Romans chapter 10, it says that whoever believes in Him will never be put to shame. They will never run away. They will never be disappointed. Because Jesus is a proven peace in front of us. Jesus is a proven person, person or proven, proven Christ, proven Messiah in front of us. We need to analyze our 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 status, where we are, where, why it is happening. We cannot just we cannot just say that because we are human, I'm not Jesus. Sometimes you say, I'm not Jesus. Jesus could do, but I could not do. No, with the help of Jesus we can do. Today, this is the this is the close of this message. The curse is broken. Tell your neighbor the curse is broken. Amen. Okay? So we as we are going to study about this, you will get you will get solid answers and you will find yourself free from any shadow of curse which came in our life through disobedience, through willful disobedience, willful rejection of God. The curse follows when we disobey God. Not getting into part one and part two. You can watch this on YouTube. The church is broken through the Father's house garden. You can watch it. Now let's continue. The curse comes in our life through willful disobedience. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 15 it says, and it shall be, if you will not listen to the voice of the Lord your God to observe and to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command you today, all these curses shall come on you and overtake you. Blessings also overtakes us. When it is cursed, it was, it's also having the same speed. It will not just delay. Because you are praying, you are fasting, you are seeking God, it will overtake. Sign of blessing is Deuteronomy chapter 28, verses 1 to 14. If you read, you will hear this. I will just read verse 1. And it will be if you shall listen carefully to the voice of the Lord, you are God, to observe and to do all his commandments which I command you today. 
the Lord your God will set you on high above all nations of the earth. Oh, and verse 2, and all these blessings shall come on you and overtake you. If you will listen to the voice of the Lord your God. So both the things overtake at first. That's why you need a Bible-based church. That's why you need a spirit-filled worship. That's why the Lord said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. If we keep the denominational tax on our, our shoulder, it will never set you free. If you just think that you are a Pentecostal person, you are a, you are a Baptist or you name any of the, or Roman Catholic or anybody, it will never set you free. But the word will set you free. So you must be planted in a house where you are taught the word of God. It is not that we all know the whole truth, but you are learning, you are knowing the truth little by little only. So we need to put our heart together so that you will be set free. That's the main important thing. And the curse comes through various ways. It's through idol worship, bringing abomination in our house, dishonoring parents, removing landmarks. There are a lot of curses which I mentioned about. Would like to explain a little more about the curse and then we will come into the course of this. Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 26 to 28. Deuteronomy chapter 11, verses 26 to 28. It says, Behold, I set before you today a blessing and a curse. This was told by the Lord. The Lord himself said, this one pleasure he said, this is good food, biryani, or any other chicken green, pasta, anything, whatever you like. And the other plate is fully poisoned. Which one you want to select? But it seems to be both are the same. It has same effect or look, style, everything is same. We always, we are dragged into a curse because of the beauty of the world or beauty of the things which you desire. And the other side, when you want to obey God, when you want to really look unto God, you will just feel, oh, it's taking too much time. In God, things are not that all right always. Not for God, for us. Because it delays it. He will not just give you anything which you just know. He will give you the best but you need to wait for him. You cannot make him hurry. He will never be hurry to do anything in our life. Those who wait upon God, they shall renew their strength. Amen? You need to wait upon God. But if we are not waiting and we are just doing something for the nation, for the sake of anything and everything, then it is connected with many problems. The Lord said, I have set before you today a blessing and a curse. Verse 27. The blessing. Oh, the blessing. If you obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you today. 28. And the curse. If you do not obey the commands of the Lord your God, but turn aside from the way which I command you today, to go after other gods, which you have not known. The curse comes in immediately when you go before false God. When we have idol worship, when we put our trust in something else, God means it is not literally any of the idol or any statue or any any name which carry a God's name. It can be anything. God means the one who rules your life. What is ruling your life? Who is ruling your life? You need to understand. It is not only mere names of God, but it, it must be the real, real God who created heaven and earth. Who created you in your mother's womb. 
You need to understand your, your creation itself was the will of God. It is not that any of the non-gods of this world created you. The Bible says, He has created, God has created you in your mother's womb. You are not because by chance you were born in this world. You were born with perfect will of God. Otherwise the Bible says, we will never be able to get into the salvation process. God designed, God proved that. He wants you, He wants you in heaven. That's the main thing. So here, today as we are learning this one, the Lord said, I set before you blessing and curse. But if you take curse, that's a disastrous thing. That will destroy your life. Amen? And 20 verse, Deuteronomy chapter 18 verse 9. Deuteronomy chapter 18 verse 9. When you come to the land which the Lord your God gives you, you shall not learn to do according to the abominations of the, those nations. When you come into the land which the Lord your God is giving you, you shall not learn to follow the abominations of those nations. Most of the time when you are at your hometown or place, you are very good. You don't make a mistake. You are under the guidance of your parents or your elders or the society. But the time you come out of the place, you start practicing things of those nations. Your friends, they may invite you for a nightclub. You will go there. That's the only of the nation. That but when you were at home, you never do that. When they invite you for a party, you will just go grab a glass of wine initially. And then it changes to beer. Then it changes to black, white, level, brown water. All this you will take. You learn the abomination from the nations where you are ruling. It never brings any peace in your life. But since the Lord spoke about the word, I have put a blessing and curse in front of you. What really happens is, he said about it, Israelites agreed for it, they said amen for all these curses and blessings. You are taking curse in your life while you are going. So youngsters, I want to tell you something. When you are, hello all of you, children, when you are in a land where your father and mother is not there, we always listen to the voice of God. Read the word. Stay on that. Maybe they will invite you for many things. You may you may enter into new friendship, but still the word should be in your life so that you will prolong your days. You will live in the fear of God. It is not that only when your father and mother is near to you, you will obey God. Even when they are not there, you must have a regular prayer time. You must read Bible. You must practice holiness. You must practice the righteousness of God. When someone is telling a lie, oh, you should not fight with it. You should just stand for the truth. Even your friends may forsake you and they may tease you, they may ridicule you, they may try to, to, to corner you. But still, if you stand for God, meaning if you stand with the principles of the kingdom of God, let me tell you one thing. You will never fail. After some time, the promise of God will come in front of you. It says, no man shall stand against you throughout your life. It, it doesn't happen all of a sudden. I'm not only talking about the youngsters, I'm talking about the whole thing. If you want victory and success in your life, practice the word of God. The word will set you free. No one will stand in front of you. No dog will bark at you. That was the promise of God. No dog will bark at you. If you have a dog trouble at your native town out here, hold the promise. The promise says that no dog will bark at you. It will keep there. You just look at the dog, it will, it will be very quiet. I've thrown all this in, in my life. I have advised people, prayed for people, and seen that the result is there. I think before I said this testimony, I will tell again. There was a brother in our fellowship. One person is to just 
fight with him for no reason. When he passes in front of his shop, he will just speak all bad words about him and he will fight with him. So he came. He came to the end of the day, I have a problem like this. This man fighting on this day. And I don't say anything, else, but he speaks all bad words. I said, don't worry. These are the two promises you are going to believe in. And I'm going to pray for you. I said, no man shall stand against you. And no dog will die. I prayed for him and I sent him. The next day morning he's passing in front of the shop. It happened in near American Network. This man became quiet. He's not telling anything. And still he left the place in the room. This man never opened his door. It's a proven thing. You just try doing the word in your life. Just accept the word and put that in your heart. It will bring change. So when you come into the land, don't just practice the abominations of it. Believing Christians, believing Christians have come in this place and joined with the nation or the people of this nation. They got married. They produced children. Get into more trouble. I have prayed for people in this place. We do not know. That is things we do not know. One girl came, is crying with her. She said, I know I am committing a wrong I don't want this relationship. I'm married to so and so. A very powerful person. He's a lawyer. I said, Whether lawyer or anybody, my God is greater than him. I asked you, really, you don't know what this relationship is? You want to pray to me? If you want really, I will pray for you. And I equipped her. See, I taught her the word. I prayed for her. After three months, everything was changed. She went back. She was a Christian, born again. The third thing, all held her. He then did the trouble. But he realized he repented and turned to God. God set her free. Now she is in, in Philippines or some other place. I want to tell you something. If you practice any of the abominations of the nation where you are, if you accept God, the nation, if you stand for, for unrighteousness, all of a sudden, you may not you may not know the curse is following you. But the moment you put yourself into it, the curse starts walking along with you. In the spiritual realm, when you walk, the curse also is walking. When you stop, it will also stop. And it starts to Bad relationship, immorality, fornication, adultery, the curse follows. Witchcraft. Oh, curse follows you. Idol worship, the curse follows you. Because those are things which God spoke again. 18 verse 10, Deuteronomy chapter 18 verse 10. There shall not be found among you anyone who makes his son or his daughter to pass through the fire or that uses divination, an observer of clouds or a fortune teller or a witch. Verse 11, or a charmer, or a consultor with familiar spirit, or a design, or one who calls to the dead. It's very interesting to go to a witch. How many of you have been to a witch? How many of you know that, what is witch? Who is witch and witchcraft? You know you are a witch? No. You know witch. You've been to witch You've been to a witch. You participated in any ceremony? So none of you have any ideas of witch. Witch and witch Yeah. One, two, okay. Three, four, one. Five, yes. Six. So I thought that I am the only one. <laughs> I was thinking you take the leadership of that. <laughs> At the age of maybe eight years, 
something like eight years I've been, I was with the witchcraft, with witch, infected the witchcraft. I've seen demons entering into him, speaking in tongues, and speaking to those spirits to go out. I've seen all this. But it's a clear. These are all true things. Witchcraft. And witch. But because God has forbid all this. God has forbidden all this. So anywhere if you have put your foot into it, the curse falls. So we need to repent. And one more thing. If you have repented, those who raised your hand, if you have repented and prayed about it, and you got your victory, that's it. You don't have to pray again. But if you are confused and you were, you know that, no, it is not really broken. I know the effect of that still somewhere here, there. Then you have, you, have, you can pray for it. Because sometimes, maybe you are not in the right place at the time. Then, you know, things can happen. But, once you have prayed, that is faith. Once you have prayed in full faith, you stand for it. If you have a problem today, we have time for, take time to pray for that. I will pray for you. We all are going to stand and whoever is having a problem will pray. Don't worry about it. So idol worship, witchcraft, divination, calling to death. Some people, they can speak to that dead person, but it is not true. Once you are dead, you go to the place where Jesus is located. If you are a born again person, you live faithfully, you will go to heaven. And you cannot come back. And if you are not born again, and if you have died, if you have, if you have, if you have experienced death, then what happens is, you go to a place where the non-born again person started. And you say that. You cannot come back. But some people, they say they can speak to the dead. Those are demonic spirits. For every family, every family, your kindred, there is a familiar spirit. There is a spirit which knows your forefather, who was he, how was he, how was his voice, what are his style, everything he knows. There is a spirit connected with it. They just practice their style. They come up and they come up and speak. I am so and so. His, the name, the, the, the person will immediately say. And you are a fool. Your grandmother, your grandfather, your husband, your wife can never come back into this, into this world once they are gone from this world. That's the truth. That's the truth which we learn from the word of God. But exactly in opposite of that, these witches, they will bring this familiar spirits who will just imitate your grandmother or any person whom you want to see. And, uh, oh, I spoke to my grandfather. I spoke to my grandfather. And then at the same time you will see a dream also about your grandfather visiting you and speaking to you. Those are all because there is an open door. There is an open door. A open window in your spirit. You are, which you have opened for these demonic forces to come in and get out. That's why you get all those kinds of encouraging dreams. But after you finish your dream, when you get up, you are feeling so dry and tired and you, you don't feel there is peace in you. No peace. You, you don't feel like that's the effect of those demonic visitations. Sometimes you may not be able to sleep for days. Horror, horror, uh, what's that? Horror dreams. You want to sleep, you will not be able to sleep. Those are the demonic visitation because of the curse. You need to close the, those doors. You need to analyze, exactly you need to analyze where, what happened. And then close it. 
so that it will never come into your life again. Because when Jesus closed, nobody can open it. The Bible says, the word of God says in Revelation, when I close, no one can open. When I open, when no, nobody can shut. Hallelujah. We need to close certain doors which you have opened or your forefather has opened or someone else have opened in your mother line or your father line. Which we need to close. We need to underline. That's, that's the main thing in here. So here, the Lord said, for all, verse 12, for all that do these things are an abomination to the Lord, and because of these abominations, the Lord your God drives them out from before you. Because the Canaanites, the Jebusites, all those people who were God took out from their own land and gave those lands to the Israelites. Why? Because they were practicing such kind of abomination in that nation. So what the effect is, a curse means it drives them out of the promise where they are. If something is taking, if something is taking out your blessing, if, suppose, you are about to get what you were praying for. You are about to get a promotion. You are about to get a good financial breakthrough. Everything has come. You got the financial breakthrough for 50 BD monthly increment, but on the other side, there is an extra unwanted expenditure is also incurring for 100 BD. So 50 BD loan. Though your prayer is answered, but on the other side you are spending. When you want to buy something, the price goes up. When you want to really save, all extra expenditures come. And in the end of the year, I don't know where I am. How I will go next year? Oh my God. The public is a sign of truth. Nothing else. You need to analyze. You may not be able to find immediately answers for this, but you put your heart in God and say, that, Lord, I want to know where I am. Why this a mixture of things are happening with me? I do not want. I want to stay with you. I'm ready to sacrifice anything what you tell me. I'm ready to obey the word. Then the Lord will start working. So here, because of these abominations, the Lord your God drives them out before you. The Lord drives them out the same way you are also driven out. Some people lose, lose job every three years. Some people lose job every two years. Some people lose job every six months. Some get good position, some get bad position. Some go for interview, they will not think. Everything is there, everything is perfect. They are very good. But eventually what will happen is another person will, person will take your place, which you are supposed to be. It's a curse. You will be engaged with a, with, a, with a girl, the proposed wife, but in the end it will not happen. So are going to be just married. So these things are kind of things. Kind of things. That's the problem. Because you might have disobeyed God or your poor father. Verse 13 says, verse 13 says, You shall be perfect with the Lord your God. You shall be, shall we just, just read this together? You shall be blameless before the Lord your God. Blameless. What is blameless? Blameless means right standing with God. What is right standing with God? It is righteousness. Amen? It is righteousness. Yes. Righteousness means it is right standing with God. Blameless means right standing with God. When God sees you, hey, he's very perfect, he's very good, she's very good. Wow. 
But how we can get that blameless, blameless state? How we can get it? We can only get it by becoming a follower of Jesus. By believing in the precious blood of Jesus. By standing for the word of God, you will be blameless. God spoke to Abraham. Abraham, walk before me and be blameless. The Lord said, walk before me as family, as individual. You walk before God. Don't just try to entertain anybody who comes in your life in terms of God only. Just stay with God. Even your friends are not there. Even people are not going to support you. If people are going to leave you, never be bothered about it. You just stay with God and say that, Lord, let the whole world forsake me. I will stay with you. There will be a time where God will test you and prove you that you are faithful and you are able to stand with the word what you have committed. Most of the time it happens in our life in this way. When we go through situations or when you are proven through the word of God and you just pray that, Lord, from today I will believe you and I am going to, to stand for the word. I will never oppose you. I will never disobey you. And Lord, please help me. And you do not, you don't see any sign of help from God. You don't even feel that God heard your prayer. And you will just think, oh God, I am feeling I am ready and I will never disobey him. I will just walk with him. But he is not responding. You will feel that kind of a nervousness within you. God still be silent. You may go for fasting and praying and you will do many things which you, you want to do it and still no answer. Will God be this? How much you will hold on with your commitment? I told you. More than one and a half hour, one and a half years, I could not hear God's voice. But I know he's there. If I ask him anything, no answer. But if I pray for people, they are healed. And I preach, the Lord speaks. But with me, very difficult. You can die, sir. Where is this guy? Why is he not speaking? Before he was speaking to me, now I know. But then I will tell him that. No, sir. You don't want to speak to me, no? But still, I will talk to him. I went for about one and a half years. Every day, I will speak to him to say, I love you. I will never leave you. All over you, I tell you. Even if you are silent, no problem. I will just still, I will do what you are doing. After one and a half years of silence, death, the Lord spoke to me. And he proved that he is faithful. He proved he is powerful. He expanded the territory. He brought me into, into life. That's what was God. Amen. Sometimes when you, when you really don't get any answer, don't be sad. Just stay at it. But wherever we need to bring correction, bring correction. So here, God placed the, the, the curse and blessing in front of the people. And he said, now, you should speak this. The curse and blessing to establish, the Israelites should speak it. And he, he said in Deuteronomy chapter 27, verse 12, Deuteronomy chapter 27, verse 12 says, These shall stand on Mount Gerizim to bless the people when you have come over Jordan. Simeon and Levi and Judah and Issachar and Joseph and Benjamin to speak or to bless the people. This six tribes to stand and bless the people, that's what the Lord said. And verse 13 says, And these shall stand on Mount Ebal to curse Reuben, Gad, and Asher, and Sebulun, Dan, and Naphtali. All the six tribes should stand on this Mount Ebal and curse. Stand and agree the curse. 
all these two mountains stand, witness the whole world till today, and it established the curse and blessing. God said, I am bringing curse and blessing in front of you. Which one you will choose? You will choose the right one or the left one. Who said it? Saralite. They said it. They are the representatives of the whole world. They are standing. And so whoever breaks the command of God, whoever disobeys the command of God, the curse comes from them. And whoever obeys God, the blessing comes. And Jesus said, John chapter 10 verse 10, the thief does not, John chapter 10 verse 10, the thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. The Mount Ebal, it stands as a curse and Jesus said, Oh, the thief comes to kill, steal and destroy. The curse comes to steal and destroy, nothing else. But Jesus said, I am on the right hand, with the right hand of the Father, and that's the blessing, that the mountain which, which speaks about blessing says, I have come to give you peace, I have come to give you blessing, and I have come to give you life, life more abundant. You will enjoy life when you are with Jesus on the right hand side. Hallelujah. When you are on the left side, let me tell you, it's a curse. The effect of curse comes, steal, kill and destroy. That's it. First it will be, you, your blessings shall be stolen. Little by little. Little by little it will be. And then it will start bringing the death effect. Kill means it is death effect. Effect of death start taking over your life. Finally, it shall be destroyed. But before it gets destroyed, before the death takes over, before healing happens, get into Jesus' son and be a blessing. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 5 verse 6 says, For we yet being without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. Romans chapter 5 verse 7 says, For one will with difficulty die for a righteous one, yet perhaps, one would even dare to die for a good one. But God commends his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Christ is the only one who died for us so that the life, abundant life will come in, in us. We will never be put to the destruction, but whereas he will save us, he will lift us up, and he will prove that he can sustain you even while you are drowning. Maybe you are at the drowning stage right now. Maybe you are so disappointed, you are, you are finding no hope. People are fighting with you, people are having, maybe they are jealous at you. They don't want you to progress, but let me tell you, if you are more on Jesus' side, don't look at the people, Lord, don't look at the situation. You just stand with Jesus Christ and say that, Lord, I will never leave you nor forsake you, but you be with me in the stormy season. Hallelujah, when Jesus was in the boat and the storm happened, the, the waves rolled and the wind, wind was just hitting them and they were about to drown. But Jesus, he stood on the boat and he rebuked and he calmed the storm and the wind. Everything became normal. The curse is gone. They felt a soothing. They felt the calmness. They felt the peace which surpassed every understanding and they reached the other side. Let me tell you today, be on Jesus' side. Tell your neighbor, be on Jesus' side. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Romans chapter 5, verse 14. But the free gift... Sorry. 5, verse 14. But death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those who had not sinned in the likeness of the transgression of Adam, who is the type of him who was to come. Verse 15, but the free gift shall not be also like the offense. For if by the offense of the one many died, much more the grace of God and the gifted grace which is of the one man, Jesus Christ, 
abound to many. Now the, 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 the meaning is, since the people have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, curse has taken over their life. There was no way they could not come out because they are helpless. We were helpless. We were sinners having no strength to overcome the curse which was prevailing in our life. But Jesus Christ, he came, he died, he, he died and he rose again. And whoever believes in Jesus Christ, the abundant life starts taking over their life. He removes the curse. Now you just read Galatians chapter 3 verse 13 and 14. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law. Being made a curse for us, it is written, Cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. Verse 14. That the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus. That we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. The Bible says, Whoever hangs on it, that was the command of God. That was one of the laws which God gave to the, the Israelites. Anybody who, who, is, who, who will be hanged on a tree is a cursed person. So one of the worst verdict or judgment for a worst criminal is hanging him on a tree. Otherwise they will be beaten or they will be slashed. But anybody who is going to be hanged on a tree is a curse. So Jesus was hung on a tree. He was, he was crucified on a wood. That old rugged cross. He was crucified. That stands as a curse. So Jesus, now as we read this, Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law. Being made a curse for us, it is written us. You just believe that you are that person. Christ died for me. He took the curse, what all came in my life, through my disobedience, through my morality, through my, through my idolatry, through my witchcraft, through my abominations, through my rebellion, disobedience, whatever, wherever I have disobeyed God, the curse was upon me. But Jesus, without any curse, because he was tempted and tested and tried, he, he, he proved that he is able to withstand. And he became a curse. When you believe in Jesus Christ, you receive your salvation. Your name is written in the book of the Lamb of God according to the book in Revelation and in the book of Exodus. You are a child of God according to John chapter 1 verse 12. You are led by the Spirit of God according to Romans chapter 8. You are in the family of God according to 1 Peter chapter 2. You are everything in the household of Jesus Christ. But you need to believe that I am no more under a curse. I am no more a servant. I am a son in the house of God. Give Jesus a clap offering. When it comes to, when it comes to believing Jesus Christ, it is not only salvation, he brought release from curse. He totally released you, liberated you. He made you a son in the kingdom of God. He made you a son in his house. You are, you are not supposed to trouble yourself in anything. You are not supposed to have more trouble of the world. But Jesus said, I have come to give you life, life more abundant. The problem happens because we just put our hands in both the places. We need to be very careful. Which food we will eat? The curse or the blessing? Here when you look at, when you look Jesus Christ on the cross, I'm not telling that you, you need to have a cross at home and put Jesus figure on it and then every day go and look at no need. That is, that is not what the Bible teaches. When you look at Jesus Christ on the cross, in your spirit, you are no more cursed. Jesus is cursed. He is just lying on the cross, 
with your curse on him. You just believe you are exchanging right now. When you come near to Jesus Christ, you are coming to exchange some things which are troubling you and something which are which you do not want to have and which you should not have. You are just going to give to Jesus Christ. And he he was though he was not cursed. He did not have any problem. He was not a cursed person. He was a blessed person. He came to give life more abundant. But the time you go near to the cross and exchange your life in him, immediately the, the Lord Jesus became a cursed person. The time you believe in this exchange process, that's the only time it happens in your spirit. But in the total word, in the, in the teaching of the word, Jesus' salvation has brought release from curse, from sin and sickness. But the, if you do not have an understanding, a faith in believing that, Jesus became my curse, meaning from the forefathers, from fourth generation or from sixteenth generation or from fourteenth generation, Whatever the curse was running down to you, what I mean to say is, maybe you are the first fruit in your household that you found Christ. All the others were worshippers of any other gods in this world. Maybe some of your some of your forefathers were moonies or witch, witch, witches, or sometimes they were they were mason. They were mason. They were hardcore idolaters. Maybe some of your forefathers or your, your, your family kindred, they had their own temple and their own throne, their own idol, their own, their own, their own God. Particular name of God was in their, in your family kindred. But you are the first fruit. What you do is, you just stop all the curses which was running down to you and say, no. Now from this, this line onward, you cannot go down. Stop there. Because what you do is, the curse line which was coming on you, you are just giving into the cross of Jesus Christ. And that time, Jesus received your curse and he became a curse so that in exchange of it, he can give you the Abrahamic blessing. Jesus comes with a big package of Abrahamic blessing meaning, Genesis chapter 12, from verses 1 onwards, as you read down, you will see blessings of spoken to Jesus, spoken to Abraham by God. I will bless you. If anyone who bless you, I will bless them. If anybody curse you, I will curse them. I will make your name great. I will be with you wherever you go. Your name shall be great. You shall be blessed among all the people of the world. All those bundles of blessing, you are just part of it. You are part of it. How many of you believe that you are part of that bundle? You need to really believe it and stand for it. But tomorrow morning when you get up, still you may be the same person. After one week, you will be the same person. But you need to work with God. You cannot just pluck a flower by just planting a seed in, on the ground. You need to just wait for it. You need to allow that seed to die on the ground. You need to allow. You need to allow. You need to allow the seed to die. And then it starts sprouting up. There is a seed. During that time, you don't just go and dug again and see that whether the seed root up, then the seed will die. Or you just wait, prayerfully wait, wait for some time. Hallelujah, praise to Jesus. Oh Lord, we thank you, we praise you. Right now, as we are in the presence of God, what we are really going to do is, we have some time we have. Do you want to be part of Abrahamic blessing? Really you need to understand yourself, understand your family, understand yourself, where all you are part of. 
How many times you disobeyed God? How many times you put your hand in things which are not really godly? In your adult life, if you have messed your life, you brought hurt on it. In your teen life, if you have messed your life in immorality, fornication, adultery, anything, you have messed your life. Any time if you have conducted any abortion on you, or you have compelled someone to abort a fetus, it's a curse. I'm just telling you to examine it. For medical purposes, other than any kind of abortion, that's it. But under medical supervision and it's a must. That's what we believe. In our position of position concerning doctors, we believe that. Certain times to save the mother, we need to say yes to But not for enjoying. Understand this. Any time if you have come across with anything, if you have sided also for destroying a people, you just side with an unrighteous thing. I have witnessed all this. I have seen curse happening in people's lives. You know? Just examine yourself. Anywhere. If you have done any 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 kind of murder by this. You may not say, no, I have not killed anybody. If you have done that, you have killed a person. You have killed a life. Because life is from the Lord. Without God consent, nothing born in this world. Examine our Let us examine. And if you feel, Yes, I have a curse. Maybe from your forefather. He was not a good man. Maybe he grabbed somebody's property. Maybe he, he troubled widow and orphan, fatherless. Maybe he has moved the boundary. Anything which is not right you need to stand there and just say that, Lord, right now, I am your child. I am your child. I want to be delivered from this. I do not want. I do not want any kind of problem to prevail in my life. Hallelujah. Okay, everyone is closed. Fine. Just take some minutes. Take some minutes. It's so painful when you are going through that kind of thing. Because the Lord said, it will follow you like a shadow and follow you until you get to soul. So it will not happen again. Jesus said, if the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Or let it not happen anymore. I always say, I always believe this. If you are really truly born again, within three months' time, problems will disappear. It takes little time to. Some people I have seen within a few days. Some people I have seen within months, one month time, two months time. But it will not take more than six months. By the time you will put yourself into the word and bring the bring freedom in your life. As we are in the presence of God. I know the pain of her. The disappointment you get through when you really feel that everything is going down. When you feel, when you lose fortune amount of money. When you lose money every month. When you lose your health every day. 
when you lose peace sometimes though everything is there you have no peace at home when your family people are together there is always fight when more than two three people come together at home your own blood brother sister you all fight suddenly somewhere the fight happens it's a sign of curse you may have a land and you want to sell the land it will never happen it's a curse sometimes your forefather might have cheated people might have dealt unrighteously treacherously with the labor the worker if a worker sheds his tear on your land on your house it's a curse the book of james it says that the cry of the laborers cry of those workers have reached to heaven god the righteous dead will get down it is not that jesus is going to come down to get that it is already dead through the word of god when you dishonor god when you disobey god when you don't respect god when you when you when you don't revere god it all falls under curse any area don't just collectively pray even today if you are all, we are only praying for one item just only pray for one item and get your victory on that hallelujah praise to jesus praise to jesus hallelujah glory to god glory to god glory to god father we thank you i just want to pray for you if you really if you really have a problem and if you understood if you have understood the effect of curse in your life just repent on the area maybe your poor father but you will repent tell the lord that lord he is no more i am not repenting on behalf of him but i repent because the curse effect is on me i know he lived and he died i know one thing that he will be in his place where you have designed for him but today I do not want me myself and my family my children my generation to have the effect of anything which my forefathers have done I disassociate with all those lines of curse you speak to God that I am a born again first I have found in Christ I am in union with Christ I have the spirit of Christ in me in my ignorance according to Acts chapter 17 verse 30 says and in my ignorance i have done i have committed sin but today lord you want me to repent and turn to you and i am coming turning to you in my in my weakness in my in my disabilities in my in my trouble in my curse i am coming back to you i know that you are not a cursed person you are my savior and my god but my curse what is on my shoulder i am just turning it to you i am just transferring all those effects of curse on you and you are a curse in my place and because you took my place and you set me free you liberated me and that you done 2000 years back on the cross of calvary today i received that one and the curse is broken in the name of jesus of nazareth the curse which the enemy brought in me is broken in the name of jesus hallelujah those who really want to have that experience of broken curse in your life just stand up and just start worshiping and praising god tell the lord that i thank you father that the power of the holy spirit of god is breaking that curse in my life it is removing eliminating every effect of it in the name of jesus i am seeing fire is coming in this place fire is just spreading in this place and burning all those things yes hallelujah start worshiping god start praising god those who are under curse is broken today in the name of jesus of nazareth let the fire come and break every yoke of the enemy in the name of jesus yes all those spirits whatever is troubling them i rebuke you in the name of jesus of nazareth i rebuke you those powers of curse those spirit of curses to leave them and go set the free right now in jesus name no for father's curses have any effect on the people who are standing in this place believing and declaring that christ is lord for their life in jesus name i set them free father let every burden be removed from their heart in the name of jesus 
Lord, every father line curses right now. I break in Jesus' precious name. Every mother line curses on my people. I break right now in the name of Jesus. Let your fire burn every corpse of the enemy in the name of Jesus. Wherever the enemy has tied them. Father, maybe on their leg, on their hand, on their body parts. In the name of Jesus, everything be broken. In the name of Jesus, everything be broken. Unhealthy issues, I break those things in Jesus' name. Lord Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that help to prevail in them from this moment. No unhealthiness, no sickness to prevail upon them. But in the name of Jesus, Exodus chapter 15 verse 26, I pray that Father, you are the Lord that healeth us. Today, I pray that Father, let healing takes over your children right now in Jesus' name. Yes, every diabetes I break right now in the name of Jesus. Diabetes be broken now. The curse of diabetes be broken. The curse of cholesterol issue be broken right now. The curse of thyroid issues be broken right now in Jesus' name.